I get my thing in action. Verb, that's what's happening. Hey everybody, Matt Colville here. This episode is about verbs. There are good verbs and there are bad verbs. And this is something I think is useful to us as dungeon masters and as writers and as game designers. This is something that comes up in basically every aspect of my life. And I figured it was a good opportunity to make a video. Uh, warning, by the way, this video does have a little bit of profanity in it. So Liam Thomas, ask your mom to watch this video first to make sure it's okay for you. So when you are sending your players off on an adventure, when you're writing your adventure and you're trying to figure out what are the players gonna be doing and when, or when you're writing a chapter in your novel or your screenplay or your comic book or whatever, or when you're designing your game and you're trying to figure out what is the player gonna do and when, you are always thinking about verbs, about what is the player going to be doing. Right, that's my job as a writer. It's also your job as a dungeon master and as a game designer is to create drama. And drama is tension and resolution. Tension meaning we're always supposed to be wondering, will the hero dot 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 Anytime I'm writing something like fiction, for instance, and I feel like, wow, this chapter is boring, it's because it's not dramatic, it's because there's not a good verb in there. We need to add some drama. Anytime my players are lost, the same thing happens. Anytime my players are sitting around wondering what they're supposed to be doing, it is because I have not given them a good verb. A good verb clears everything up. It is imperative, it is a directive, it is an acting verb, and it makes the player feel like they know what they're supposed to do. It removes ambiguity. A bad verb is ambiguous and confusing, and it's a kind of verb that we don't do in our everyday lives. And actually this came up because I was at work, I was editing another designer's uh, dialogue, and they had been writing, we need to find this, you need to go here and find this, you need to investigate this place. And I thought, wow, investigate is terrible. It doesn't, like the player doesn't know, and I tweeted about this, and that's how this whole thing started. I tweeted saying, anytime you have told the player to go investigate something, you have let your player down. All right, so if investigate is a bad verb, what are good verbs? Well, good verbs are directives, they are imperatives, they are acting verbs. Kill. We have to kill the boy! Stop. Even you with your great speed couldn't stop both of them. Steal. You've got to steal it. Save. Save the world. Rescue. I'm Luke Skywalker, I'm here to rescue you. Arrest. Victor Laszlo, you're under arrest. Destroy. The ring must be destroyed. Get out. Bitches leave. <clears throat> you tell those pigs to fuck off. Fuck off, pigs. Find. Actually, find is a it's a terrible, terrible verb to give your players. It's not a bad verb to give your to give your readers, to give your character. Just find the girl. See, the reason that works, the reason you can tell Jake Giddies to just find the girl is because we, the audience members, are passive. We don't have to do anything. We can trust that Jake Giddies, even if we don't know, how would we find the girl? I mean, I literally don't know how I would go about doing that, but I trust that Jake Giddies does. Right? He is an expert, and if we just sit back and watch the movie unfold, we will get to watch him doing his thing. That is a very passive thing for the audience to do. So it's okay to give your character these vague verbs like find or investigate, but when you give it to the player, now the player doesn't know what they're supposed to do. I don't know what investigate means. You mean just like walk around and, 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 and talk to people and ask questions? The players aren't cops. They don't have, or detectives. They don't have the experience of having done this. They don't know what their job is. That's why, for instance, when I ran against the cult of the reptile god, which begins, that adventure begins by telling the players, go investigate this town. There is a mystery in the town. But I thought, I knew this isn't going to work. My players are going to feel like they don't know what to do. They don't know where they're supposed to be going or who they're supposed to be talking to or what, what is the result of investigation, right? All of the other verbs we used as examples have clear results. I know when the ring is destroyed. I know when we've saved the princess. I know when we've killed the boy. But I don't know when I'm done investigating. How will I know when I see it? Maybe I, I often give my players answers and clues and they don't realize their answers and clues because they're not investigators. This often works in a video game. You can tell a video game character to go investigate something because video game players assume and they're usually right, that if they just keep playing, that if they just stumble forward blindly, often not even paying attention to the quest text or the directive they've been given, that they will over time solve the problem that they're trying to solve. They will they will succeed in investigation, whatever that means. But I, I don't take for granted that it's okay to give the player in a video game vague directives on the basis that if they just keep playing, it will resolve itself. I think it's always better for the player to understand what they're supposed to do. 
So for instance, at work, I changed it from go investigate this place to go talk to a person in that place. And against the cult of the reptile god, I picked one of the players who had, in his backstory, had siblings, and I decided one of those siblings is from the town in Orlane, the town in against the cult of the reptile god, and I wrote these long, you don't have to do this obviously, you could just say, you know, you got a letter from your sister and she's worried, go talk to her, right? That's much clearer than go investigate. But I wrote these uh, letters, like eight different letters from his sister, each one uh, describing what was happening in the town, things getting worse and worse, such that as he read them, he got more and more worried. He really wanted to talk to his sister. He wanted to make sure she was okay. And the way he thought of it was, I have to find her and talk to her. And that's, I think, a useful uh, structure for us. Because whenever we tell a player to find something, it is actually because we then want them to do something when they find it. So give me that second verb, right? Tell me to go talk to this person. Don't tell me to go find this thing. Because having found it, presumably I'm supposed to do something with it, so give me that doing verb. Find is a very noir verb. You see this in a lot of film noir because the hallmark of film noir is a character plunged into a world they don't understand, where black and white are reversed, where good and evil are backwards, where they don't know who to trust. So if you want your character to be confused and not understand what's going on, noir is great. Tell them to go find something. In fact, in my first novel, the main character, Hayden, is told to go investigate a murder, and he's not an investigator and doesn't know how to do it, and that's the whole point. And it would be a terrible adventure, right? If I made an adventure out of that first book, it would be awful because the players wouldn't know what to do. The main character, Hayden, doesn't know what to do. He just bumbles around talking to people until eventually something happens. As opposed to a hard-boiled story. Hard-boiled fiction and noir both take place in the same universe. They both take place in a seedy underworld where good and evil aren't completely obvious. But the difference is the noir hero is lost and is confused and doesn't know what to do. But the hard-boiled hero lives here and knows all the actors and speaks the lingo. Sorry I got up on my hind legs, boys, but you fellas trying to rope me made me nervous. Miles getting bumped off upset me, and then you birds cracking foxy, but it's all right now, now that I know what it's all about. I hope this is useful to you. I can always tell when I've given the players a bad verb or when the person who designed the adventure I'm running gave them a bad verb because the players are lost. They don't know what they're supposed to do. Some, they were told to find something or investigate something, and they don't know where to go or who to talk to, and they don't, they, they're they aware that they won't know when they've succeeded because they don't know what investigate means. So it's useful to us as dungeon masters, as writers, as game designers, to be mindful. I think that's the best way, mindfulness. That's the, I think that's the lesson of this whole series is that I, I'm always afraid that somebody's going to stumble across this series of videos and they're going to go, holy crap, there's like 50 or 60 or someday 100 or more videos in this. Do I have to know all this stuff to run D&D? Absolutely not. It's it just having these things in the back of your head over time will help you as a dungeon master, a writer, a game designer, being mindful of the verb you're using. Have I given my players a good dramatic verb? I think will help the proceedings along. Remember that adventure we started off with uh, you know, last year where a blacksmith bursts in, says goblins have kidnapped his daughter, and it's up to the players to find her, yes, but then what? Rescue her. Again, no point in finding her if you do not then go on to rescue her. So don't say go find her. That's, that's vague and ambiguous. Say rescue my daughter. And I think it's easy to put yourself, as you're preparing your adventure, it's, I think, really easy to put yourself in your player's shoes and sit there and think, have I given them a good verb? Or do they know what they're supposed to be doing and how they're going to go about doing it? It's one of the classic problems of some of the older adventures. Like, for instance, if you run uh, the original uh, Village of Hamlet, which is the first intro, it's the intro to Temple of Elemental Evil, it's terrible when it comes to, like, the fact that there is a dungeon out there in the middle of the swamp and you start in this town and there's not really any clear way to get from here to here the players aren't given a good verb. Back in the day, the idea that there was a dungeon out there at all, that was the only verb they needed, right? As soon as the players would hear that there was a dungeon out there, they would drop whatever they were doing and they would go try to loot the dungeon. That's another good verb, go loot, which really means steal. But nowadays, I think we want better verbs than that. So when, if you, for instance, we're gonna, I think there's a, quite a lot to recommend, by the way, in T1, the Village of Hamlet, but it's up to you to come up with a good verb. For instance, the last time I ran Village of Hamlet, one of the players was a half-orc and he, by himself, went into the general store that was run by two members of this evil cult and because they saw a half orc walk in they presumed this guy was a bad guy and they gave him a chest with a bunch of potions and said take this to Larith the beautiful I don't know what they called him they might have called him the chosen one or something like that in the moat house so that was a great verb right take this to him that's it folks mind your verbs until next time peace out